Welcome on, welcome all to the Texas Motor Speedway. We've got some amazing champion power equipment iRacing truck series action in store for you tonight. I'm Austin Edge from standing alongside Brian Britt and Austin Darbyshire behind the production booth as always. Brian, it seems like every time the champion power equipment series goes to Texas, it's a banger. I mean, last season's season opener, side by side, right to the line, 15 thousandths of a second determined the race winner. That was Heath Snyder one season ago. Who's it going to be tonight? I don't know. That's a tough question, but um, of course, it, you're right. This track is always uh, producing some awesome racing in this series. And, uh, you know, whenever they first introduced this new version of this racetrack, I kind of didn't like it, to be honest with you. But it's grown on me. Um, I, I actually got to say I'm a fan now. Um, so let's look at some of the details of this racetrack, Austin. Absolutely. Going to get a deep dive of the Texas Motor Speedway here on the Google Earth View. Uh, and to your point, I hate this track in real life. Still do. I can't stand it. But man, on the iRacing service, I don't know why, but it puts on a good show. Uh, I mean, goodness gracious, the race last season here in the Champion Power Equipment Truck Series was one of the most entertaining ones that I have ever called in my life. Uh, and we're going to get probably the similar, uh, similar show here tonight as turns one and two incredibly debanked compared to turns three and four. Very, very little banking over in one and two. Long, long sweeping corner. And then the exact opposite, down into turn three, just about full throttle. Might have a little bit of a lift just to save those tires, just to get down to the bottom of the racetrack. But, man, you're going to be throwing that truck around uh, three and four. All right, let's take a look at the uh, keys to the race. What, what is it going to take to win this race? We're getting ready to find out. Of course, tire management. That's an interesting way to spell that word. Tire management is going to be a big, uh, big deal here tonight. I mean, I've heard that uh, on the longer run, the truck does tend to get very loose. Uh, also, when you're running, a, you know, different lines, you, you know, I think that tire wear is going to be line sensitive. So, going to keep an eye uh, on that. Move on to our second key of the race, which is going to be be careful with your blocks. You talk about one and two and why this race is so exciting is probably because of the blocking that we're probably going to end up seeing. I mean, you, you can get you could dive it in or get a huge run on somebody uh, in one and two get the pass completed and on the exit of two you're going to be a lot slower than they are and you're going to have to throw blocks so of course our third one is run low or burn them off and that kind of goes back to uh, what i was talking about about tire wear uh if you run high in three and four you will burn your tires off absolutely there's a little bit of risk involved over there in that corner of the racetrack maybe a little bit in one and two as well uh but one and two is more of a it kind of suckers you into turning the wheel too much and wearing that right front tire. Three and four is a little bit more with the throttle. But we're going to move into our broadcast picks. Up first is myself, and I pick Nathan Meyer. I think Nathan Meyer is going to bring this thing home uh, extremely quick. Been good at the mile and a half. Uh, put Nathan Meyer at the top. Yeah, I'm going to go with James Harris. You know, coming off of that victory last week at Martinsville, very awesome uh, run for him. And I know he's really fighting hard to uh, honor his dad and, and just, you know, definitely get those uh, the family mindset i think up in the uh, you know uplift the family mindset would be good for those guys uh, of course austin darbyshire he's going to be picking tyler meeks and he says that uh, tyler meeks has been running really good here lately he thinks that this is uh you know it's time for him to click one off we still have about one minute left in the qualifying session so i think we're going to use this opportunity to jump into a quick uh quick little schedule check for the rest of the week as we are working Tuesday night here in the Champion Power Equipment Truck Series. Starting tomorrow night on Wednesday night, it's going to be at the old Texas Motor Speedway, the 2008 scan for the Thunderclap iRacing Series. That's going to be absolutely amazing. Those Gen 4 cars going around old Texas Motor Speedway. Cannot wait to see that one tomorrow night. Thursday, starting in May, TNT will return. That'll be at 8 p.m. Eastern uh, starting uh, in about a month. And then on Friday night, once again, the Ryko Performance, Friday night top split NIS on friday night from the texas motor speedway and we saw last night the a open cars man the next gen cars put on a good good show especially coming to the finish at texas motor speedway i don't know why because they suck in real life but man they got it figured out on the iRacing racing service and then on saturday the major series is going up to mount panorama my goodness what a racetrack there down under in australia cannot wait to watch that one on saturday that's gonna be at 9 p.m eastern yeah, sounds like you guys got an exciting schedule ahead for sure. And uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to have to look at at some point during this race is how close the points are for the Champion Power Equipment Truck Series. Yeah, absolutely. The Champion Power Equipment Truck Series always has uh, a tight battle. I mean, I feel like just about every single week it's uh, really close. I'm looking at them uh, uh, secondhand right now. Nathan Meyer currently leading the points over James Harris by four points. 
but we're gonna look through our starting grid as everybody's kind of gridding up currently. James Harris gets the pole easily by about 2,000, sorry, two hundredths of a second over Keegan Sabilo with the 29.822. Sabilo in that P2 spot. Nathan Meyer gonna be starting at third, Carter Casey fourth, Tyler Meeks in fifth, Timothy Babcock starting in the sixth place position, John Lucido in seventh, Andrew Hale in eighth, Garth Schneider starts in ninth with John Thacker rounding out the top 10. James Harris is gonna be starting in 11th place, 12th place, William Mann Jr. Uh, 13th, Colby Jackson, 14th, Ray Kennison, 15th, Brian High, uh, 16th, George Young. Surprised Young starting so far back, considering he was actually really fast in practice. Uh, 17th, Russ Kilgore, and 18th, Dan Hillowood. So that's a look top to bottom at this 18 car field. Now, what's really interesting, we've talked about this points about Nathan Meyer being at the top of the, the grid. Of course, James Harris, he's second in the points. Keaton Sabilo is third in the points. Look at where they are starting. First, third, or first, second, and third right now. So the top three, are not exactly in the same order, but they are up there. <laughs> yeah, and they're only separated by five points in the standings. I mean, that's unbelievably yeah. close. And then guess who's P4 in the standings and where he's starting? That'd be Tyler Meeks. He's starting fifth. So he's right there too in that uh, uh, in that fourth place position in the point standings. And he's only eight points behind the leader of Nathan Meyer. So honestly, anybody in the top four of the point standings right now is looking, I don't know, they're looking to possibly contend for the championship. Yeah, and, and, and Meeks, I, I don't really blame uh, our producer for picking him. He's been really on, on fire here lately. Um, this is probably his best season we've seen thus far uh, from Tyler Meeks. I, just, I don't know, something different about that 17 this year. Yeah, Tyler Meeks has just been a step quicker than he has been in seasons past, and you got to think that he's put in a lot of time and effort to, to make that possible here at the mile and a half Texas Motor Speedway. A lot of opportunities uh, it's, are going to be on hand tonight. We're going to use this opportunity, though, right before the green flag flies to pay a little bit of attention to our presenting sponsor, Champion Power Equipment, because this broadcast is brought to you by Champion Power Equipment. Since 2003, CPE has earned a reputation for designing and producing the market's finest power equipment. With over 4.5 million generators sold in North America, Champion has decades of experience providing dependable and durable power products designed and engineered in the United States for the North American and world markets. Visit us at championpowerequipment.com for more information. Champion Power Equipment powering your life and as the champion power equipment truck series travels down the back straightaway at a measly 60 miles an hour we're uh, we're all getting ready for them to do it at about 170 next time by yeah definitely gonna be exciting i do want to call attention to james harris uh, rocking the texas rangers paint scheme uh, of course he is a texan and mm -hmm. uh, of course that is also his father's favorite baseball team so uh, looking, I'm definitely cheering on James Harris after last week's race at Martinsville. Hey, better than the Astros. Uh, as long as he doesn't have Astros on the hood of that thing, we're good. I don't like cheaters. James Harris, though, coming out to turn number four. Like you mentioned, on the pole. Led just about every lap here last season. Did not get the W. This time starting on the pole once again. The driver of the 55, James Harris, slams the gas pedal, gets us down to the green flag. Yeah, really good. We start. Start. Hopefully he can put a full race together. That's what I think he's hoping for here is he's got the lead going into turn one. But I'll tell you who had a magnificent start. Nathan Meyer. Meyer getting a little bit loose, though, as the tires are not up to temp. Gets a little bit wiggly off of turn two. Tries to hold off. Uh, I do believe that is Tyler Meeks. He can Sabila right there behind the 24. Yeah, Tyler Meeks went from fifth to third on that restart. And all of a sudden, down to turn number three, Sabila able to get back to his inside. And like you mentioned in the pre-race, it's a little sketchy on that outside. You might burn up the tires a little bit on the outside of three and four. Meeks just lets Sabilo back through. And now Sabilo's putting a little bit of pressure on the 24. Yeah, you can see Sabilo, of course, side by side with the seven. The seven running that higher side. Timothy Babcock, of course, moving up there, too. You can see these guys really able to, uh, you know, have the momentum on exit uh, in turn two. It's, ooh, the 73 Lucido getting incredibly close to the 99. Where did Lucido come from? He's like, here I am. Yeah, it was a little close entering turn number three. I thought we were getting our first big accident. Babcock on the outside. You see them just a little late turning in, probably trying to get the side trap as much as possible before they get down to the corner. But rolling up on the back bumper of Sabilo, and Sabilo's typically a tire saver. So if you're the 73 and you're trying to go forward, it's probably not the guy you want to be behind. Yeah, and, you know, especially a track like this, I think Sabilo's going to try to see if he can make something happen in the long run. He's probably going to run the bottom as, as long as he can. Um, and, of course, this is going to be all about saving tires. You're going to get loose later in this run. But I tell you, we've had a little bit of a runaway from for uh, James Harris and Nathan Meyer. They have gotten about a half a second ahead of Sabilo right now. Sabilo's kind of holding up everybody behind him. Yeah, just a little bit, but again, we were talking about he is the tire saver, but now they're three wide coming out of turn number two. Sabilo got shucked into the middle 
Lacido trying to get to the inside still. I don't know if he quite has the run. Tyler Meeks, though, did on the outside easily. Able to get through the P3, another side-by-side -side for that fourth-place spot. Sabilo on the outside where he does not want to be wearing out those tires. Yeah, I don't. I think he just, uh, I got a little afraid. You know, you see, you see the step three coming up on him. You got to get a little nervous. I mean, I got to be honest. I mean, he's definitely a great driver. He very, very, very much wants to ask you, and, and, and a lot of times, he kind of intimidates you. I think he is the intimidator of this series in a lot of ways. Yeah, I would be nervous seeing that one. We saw him at Daytona last season um, by bulldozing his way through. He didn't wreck anybody in that race, but he was very aggressive pushing people out of the way. And to his credit, it freaking worked. <laughs> and it was a yeah. pretty impressive win over at Daytona last season. At Texas, I don't know. It, you can't really get away with that. If you bump somebody like that in the middle of three and four or move them, you're probably both getting jumped. And I, and I got to say, I mean, he's seen a lot better, I think, performance here as of late. I mean, even though he's been really, really aggressive, he's been performing at a, at a high, high level. So I got I to gotta give a lot of credit to Lucido. You know, if he could just calm down a little bit, I think he would be a really uh, a championship contender as we have a battle going on right now for uh, – Oh, George Young through the grass. George Young through the grass. Somebody else hard into the outside wall down the front oh, straightaway. No. I couldn't quite tell who was into the outside fence coming out of turn number four, but George Young was sliding through the dirt. Yeah, no caution flag. We do stay green, but I can see the 48 has fallen back quite substantially. He is now back into 18. We're going to see if we can't find out exactly what happened here. As you can I think see it was Russ three. Gilmore behind him. I thought it was a black truck that was in the outside wall. I think that's Colby nope. Jackson getting into the outside wall. Yeah, Colby Jackson gets into the outside wall, comes down into the 48. The 48 takes a little bit of an excursion through the grass. I don't think the 48 of Young got any damage really from that. I, I think that Colby Jackson probably got more damage hitting the wall than George Young did there. Oh, absolutely. I think you'd uh, you nailed that one on the head. I don't think that George Young really felt anything. The new or the newer damage model on these trucks very very stiff, very tough to to kind of damage these things with truck to truck contact unless you were absolutely wrecking, and that just really wasn't the case there for George Young. Just a little skirt through the dirt after getting a little bit of a nudge coming off of turn number four. I'm telling you, one thing I'm finding really interesting is looking through all this track. I mean, we're seeing a wide range of lap times here. Of course, the top two are hitting 31.1, or 30.1s, I should say. Tyler Meeks is hitting some of the fastest laps on the track. He is the fastest on the track. 30.085 from him in third place. Uh, you know, everybody fifth on back is hitting fours and fives. So a wide range of lap times. Battle for the lead, though, as here comes Meyer to the inside. Yeah, diving down to the bottom of turn number one, Nathan Meyer got tired of running in the tire tracks of James Harris. Did not like that dirty air he was getting, and James Harris really didn't put up a fight. I kind of like that from James. It's early going. Make sure you keep the tires on that thing. Very, very long run we got here, and honestly, the front four, like you were mentioning, kind of varying lap times throughout the entire field. The front four is pulled away, maybe not caring about saving tires as much, but everybody from fifth on back, Sabilo in the 77 on back, they're saving. They're running tremendously slower, and I'm going to tell you right now, Sabilo is not this far off of Nathan Meyer and James Harris without saving tires. So I guarantee you a big chunk of this pack right here is uh, saving tires, including last season's champion, Andrew Hale. You think the champion can't drive up here to the top three? Come on now, Andrew Hale can get up here. He's just saving those tires for it. Yeah, I'm actually glad to see Hale uh, back here this week. I know he's missed Side by side for the lead again. Side by side for the lead crossover maneuver there for James Harris. He's able to get that position back. Battle for, I'd say, the clean air underway right now this is bringing tyler makes further and further into this fight as well i don't think this is done i think we're going to see that seven come into to fray into the fray and i think maybe even lucido i mean he, this could be a battle for the lead but the battle i'd say uh, further back is, is even hotter right now we see carter casey uh, of course followed by sabilo uh andrew hale who you just mentioned you know this is getting to be a complex battle back here yeah and if this thing runs green to the uh to the green flag pit stop. I really do think Keegan Sabilo and Andrew Hale will run down our top four. Uh, I think a couple of guys in these pa in this pack have saved their tires really well. Oh, spinner behind, coming back across the racetrack at the start finish line. I couldn't quite tell who that was, but the caution is not out, so he must have saved it. Never mind, the caution flag is flown. First caution of the evening. Saw somebody turn back best hard buddy. Right across the racetrack. It's your best buddy, James South. <laughs> uh, oh, James, buddy, what are we doing? Dan Hulwig, oh, into the this wall. is destroyed. Yeah, and, and Hillowick had nothing. That was nothing he could do right there. I mean, you clearly see his South uh, mashed or, you know, smashed into the outside wall, came down into onto the grass, and then came right back up into Hillowick. We're going to have to take another look at that one. 
That was oh. a quite a dramatic accident. Huluig really had nowhere to go. I would love to get a uh, in-car camera of Huluig or a uh, driver's seat camera of Huluig. I mean, that was just that might have been what we were just watching, but I was looking at my own screen. So. Yeah, that Huluig. There was oh. nothing he could do. He had no time no. to react to that. Oh, we even had Colby Jackson come in and probably get some more damage that to, to add on top of the damage he had from hitting the wall earlier. So this is just yeah. Hello, Wig. I'm, I would not be surprised if his day is done. Somehow that car, that truck is still driving. Even well, though he does, he does have not have a repair. Yeah, he does. You're right. If he can make it to pit road, he'll be okay. That's, that's a good point. But look oh, at that. that's a terrible sight. A terrible, his, terrible sight. His front end completely is, is demolished after that. Like we mentioned, though, luckily he does have that fast repair. Everybody in the field does get one fast repair this evening. So uh, a little bit of damage that you get under one of these wrecks can all be taken care of one time free of charge. Unfortunately, you really don't want to use that in the first 15 laps like Hulawig and, and South are doing here. Yeah, and interesting to note, it looks like for the most part, I do believe a lot of people have elected to stay. Well, a few people have elected to stay out. Nathan Meyer has decided to stay out. Tyler Meeks has decided to stay out. Andrew Hale. Everybody behind that looks like they have elected to come down pit road. Of course, wow. I do want to mention there are three sets of tires down in the pit. So 15 laps, I mean, it's quite a lot. At this track, we did see about a half a second or more of fall off. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense that you would pit here. But, I mean, I kind of can also argue from the, the place of Nathan Meyer or Tyler Meeks or Andrew Hill why you would stay out, uh, you know, to kind of, you know, keep that I would have stayed tires. out. Yeah, I would have stayed out, man. 12 laps on tires. I mean, to your point, there was a decent bit of fall off, but with we only three have, tire sets, man, you got to save a set for late in the race. We did have a wide range of, of, of strategies, though, that did hit pit road. Keegan Sabilo, gas only. Mm. Uh, so, so some drivers did, uh, uh, and Timothy Babcock, gas only. Um, James Harris, he did take a full so stop. I think uh, sure. Kilgore, he, he took only gas. So some drivers took only gas. Um, so this is going to be, this this could maybe be a powder keg uh, because of the just different sets of tires we have and different speeds these drivers are going to be running at. Yeah, I believe we were taking one lap to green this time by with a pace car. Everybody's starting to double file up. So with one lap to go until the restart happens, we're going to use this opportunity to introduce to you guys Green Mountain Grill, where innovation meets flavor and your grilling experience reaches new heights. Are you tired of the same old grilling routine? Elevate your barbecue game with Green Mountain Grills, the ultimate choice for enthusiasts who crave precision, performance, and mouth-watering results. Why should you choose Green Mountain Grill? Well, they have smart controlled technology, versatile cooking options. I can't talk at all whenever I do this stuff, man. I've got to learn something. Quality craftsmanship, wood-fired flavor, and they're easy to use and easy to clean. Ready to transform your outdoor cooking experience? Choose Green Mountain Grill, where every meal is an adventure and every bite is a masterpiece. Upgrade your grilling game today. Visit https colon forward slash forward slash greenmountaingrills.com forward slash company today. I'll tell you what, if it was Green Mountain Grills talk, if they spoke for Goodness. you, you'd be all right. You'd be, you'd it's tough. I don't out. understand, man. Every time I read their ad read in particular, my tongue j just gets tongue tied and I can't figure it out. Maybe it's because I'm hungry. Ma exactly. I'm like, my mouth starts watering in the middle of it because I'm just thinking of all that barbecue. That's, you know, that's yeah. a good point right there. Fair enough. Fair enough. That makes up for the, uh, the below quality read there. Well, just interesting that I know we're getting ready to go green here. Fuel window is about 47 laps. They might be able to make it on one stop from here. It'll Some be mighty drivers. close. Well, yeah, they probably will be able to make it. Nathan Meyer coming to the flag, though. They'll have to push it push it all the way on both stints. Who's going to try to make it happen? A little bit of a sketchy restart there from James Harris on the outside, making it three wide before they even get down to the start-finish line. Nathan Meyer, though, easily gets through into P1, down into turn number one, side-by-side -side for, for P2, though. Andrew Hale has worked himself up into that second-place spot. Well, I do. I think I, what we can explain James Harris's move right there is he is on new tires. He's a, he's the newest tires up in the field right now, uh, and he's trying to make you know hay while the sun's shining. He's trying to get past these guys, get up here, get into some clean air, and sail away. Yeah, James he's Harris has to do that as early as possible. Like yeah. you just don't want to be in the dirty air wasting the tires. Exactly. As he is, uh, of course, stuck behind Andrew Hill, takes it three wide. He's going to see if he can get shot out of cannon coming out of turn two as he is now going to go side by side for the lead. What a move. 
Nathan Meyer blocks him off perfectly, though, to where he was actually able to get a little bit of a, uh, a bump from the 55 coming out of the corner. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough for the 55. All those four freshies coming through on the bottom of turn number four. Easily takes the read from Nathan Meyer. Still side by side, barely coming to the start finish line, but he'll have it going down to the turn one. I mean, and look at the speed difference. I mean, he's two tenths, uh, two and a half tenths faster than all the other guys. So, I mean, this is the. Uh, oh, he's that's why he took those tires. And if we stay green, that's going to be a great call. But if we don't, then that's going to be not as great of a call. As we see Keegan Savila, of course, he took fuel only. He's going to go side by side with Tyler Meeks. He was one that was saving a little bit. Oh, he touches the apron, slides up a little bit, able to keep control of the race car. And he is still going to get the pass completed, able to hold the momentum on. So that's a great point that you made uh, about James Harris with the green flag run. If this thing does stay green, nah, James Harris is absolutely in the driver's seat. I mean, he is going to be able to fly away from a lot of these guys, especially after... I don't know, once Nathan Meyer and Andrew Hale's tires wear out, I don't know, another five laps, I really do think James Harris is just going to absolutely pull away from everybody that did not take tires. The question is, is it really going to stay green all the way? But, man, three wide out of turn four. That just, it's sketchy coming out of turn number four at Texas. Very, very tight. Sabilo down to the right rear quarter panel. It's just going to give the position up there to Casey in the number eight. Yeah, Carter Casey, uh, a face I haven't seen in quite a while. I'm familiar with him, of course, uh, from... Uh, a couple years ago uh, at, at the beginning uh, of course the team I'm involved with uh, very fast driver you know 4,000 plus I rating clearly knows what he's doing uh, but what did they oh, do behind. Somebody sideways in the middle of turn three and four what a save what a save somebody was 60 degrees sideways the number two Kilgore I mean what in the world was that he drifted the entirety of turn three and four yeah, we're gonna have to see if it's as dramatic as you just said it is, I gotta see this. From my perspective <laughs> that I'm at, I'm on James Harris's rear bumper camp, so I saw it from about a mile away, but it was it was pretty daggum sideways here through three. Oh, it looks like it was a multi-part thing here. I think that was the three of Colby Jackson on the bottom Oof. got hit or hit Timothy Babcock up into the two. And yeah, the two was able to save it. Great on uh Kilgore there. Unfortunately, because no caution came out, he, he is unfortunately going to be uh, falling all the way, I do believe, to the rear. As James Harris now over a half a second on uh, John Lucido. Lucido was one of the drivers that also took tires. Lucido last time by was about a hundredth faster than Harris. So watch out. The 73 is running the 55 down. Yep, just got to pay attention to these two. Two guys up there on the four fresh tires that have extended themselves out in front of everybody that stayed out under that last caution. So these might be the two that it comes down to if this thing does run down to the green flag, or sorry, to the checkered flag under green. Again, I just don't think it's happened. But I got to point out for Kilgore, whenever he was sideways through three and four, he actually got a little bit lucky that the uh, the driver that spun him out clocked him again in the uh, in the left front fender. It just kind of straightened him out perfectly for him. So Kilgore might have gotten a little lucky. Now, to be fair, if I got spun out by somebody, I would love it if they straightened me out too. So, uh, you know, it's hard to say lucky because he got a little bit of bad luck right before that to get spun. 100%. Now, the race is starting to heat up a little bit towards the front. I mean, you see Nathan Meyer, of course, in the midst of a battle with Kate Carter Casey. Carter Casey has gotten by him. Now, Casey, I'm not sure if he took two tires. I'm going to have to kind of analyze it. No, I do believe Carter Casey did take four. So he spent 14-something seconds in the box. So Carter Casey is also uh, on fresh tires. So that's why he was able to get by. Uh, Nathan Meyer here, but you can see that Meyer's not actually doing that terrible job of keeping up, even though he has a deficit on tires now. That's one thing. If, if these guys on newer tires drive it really hard and they push each other to drive harder, that could equalize it to the older tire guy. It absolutely could, but they are going to build out a little bit of a gap over that time before it evens it out. So it just depends on when does that end of the fuel run come? When do they come down pit road to take four tires and, a, and fill up their tank with fuel? Because if it's not, I don't know if, they, if they're if they going to wait a while, then it's probably not too big of a deal. But I don't know. It's a good point because I do think that they're running this one all the way out, right? They're going to have to run it all the way out to the end of the fuel stop to be able to make it to the end on one stop. So I, I, I guess it's I just, accurate. I'm doing quick math in my head. It's a little it's a little difficult sometime with the uh, – I think I got a little bit of South Carolina rubbing off on me. <laughs> well, I mean, really when it comes to <laughs> – to like the fuel, Nathan Meyer, anybody that did not pit on that last stop is not going to be able to make this on one stop. The guys that did pit, that did, that did, that just topped up. I mean, like a Keegan Sabilo, just topped off. They should be able to make it on a one stop strategy. It's going to be real close. But yeah, Nathan Meyer, I would go ahead and put a whole big X across that driver. He's not going to make it 
on one stop. He's going to have to add an extra one in there. I think he's praying for caution. Uh, you know, being he, he's hoping that's going to happen. But we do have a little bit of some action going on here. Car Schneider uh, in the midst of a battle. I do believe with Timothy Vanford for the 11th place position. And uh, they are fighting pretty hard. Yeah, as you were mentioning, they really want to caution. Everybody that stayed out, everybody that took fuel under that last one. Probably ideally for them, the caution... Well, everybody that stayed out under the last caution uh, wanted to want that caution to come out. Again, they need that caution. Lap 38, 40, somewhere around there, they want that yellow flag to come out so that everybody has to come down pit road again, and then they'd be uh, on cycle with everybody and have a fresh set or one extra fresh set of tires compared to everybody else. So uh, a couple of guys, let's see, Nathan Meyer, Andrew Hale, Keegan Sabilo, all those guys just hoping and praying for a caution. Yeah, I mean, this could go either way. I mean, this is really... Uh a split strategy in a lot of ways. I mean, you, you're either going to look uh, like a genius or you're going to look like a fool. One of the two uh, by the end of this thing, depending on what, where it goes. I mean, 30 laps in now. We do. It has all the makings of a big green run, but one thing I did hear from James Harris, he said on the longer run, you're going to see these cars, these trucks, start to get really, really loose. Now, if that's the case, even if they're not, even if they are kind of spread out at the moment, Really, really loose is not uh, usually a good thing. I mean, you can still have self spins that lead to a caution. All it takes is one. Yeah, absolutely. It only takes one. And last night, during, I believe it was the B Open. Yeah, I believe it was the B Open race that we called last night. There were green flag pit stops, and somebody stopped in that little red triangle on pit entry uh, right next to the infield. And that actually brought out the caution, even though it was uh, it was under the apron. So there, there are times that, you know, you just never know. The caution could come out even whenever you least expect it. Now, a little bit further up the field, Casey able to take second place away from Lucido uh, last time by. So, I, I don't know. We're in a little bit of a slow burn situation where we're just kind of waiting for the strategies to play out and see how the tires uh, and, and fuel just work their way into this race, I guess, uh, coming to that midway point. Yeah, I and mean, if it stays green, it's all going to be about these guys that are force pitted. Um, so, Carter Casey, he seems like he's really good on the longer run right now. John Lucido was chasing James Harris down not the case anymore. I think Lucido might have hurt his equipment here because, I mean, lap time-wise, he's slower than the front two, uh, and I think I think Casey might have, have something here, but now, of course, James Harris does have the advantage of the clean air. He is also the one that is managing the pace, I say, of the race. He's in control. He's dictating at the moment. James Harris dictating. John Lucido struggling just a little bit, losing that second place spot on the tires. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. On the other side, we're going to find out exactly who's burnt up those tires a little bit too much on this longest green flag run of the evening. Stick with us.
Welcome back to the Champion Power Equipment iRacing Truck Series. Got a little bit of a battle for the lead here. Coming back from commercial break, working lap number 39. James Harris has been run down by Carter Casey, newcomer to the league in that number eight truck. Putting a lot of pressure under the 55. Yeah, no, I definitely agree to that. And Carter is all over him right now. I'm, I'm really liking his strategy here. He's really getting a, a really straight exit uh, in three, turn three or, or off turn four, I should say, and just putting a ton of pressure on this 55 right now. I don't think James Harris expected this. Uh, I think Harris was doing a good job of saving his equipment. Here comes the blocks. We were wow. talking about these blocks happening here. I also want to talk about the fall off, a second of fall off right now. Uh, from these trucks so clearly long run is going to be something these guys are going to really have to uh, make sure they do correctly what do you do in harris's position here i mean carter seems like he has got his finger on the pulse of what it takes to get around this place on the long run oh, i feel like it's just a matter of time i don't know if there's anything james harris can really do other than wreck the guy i mean goodness gracious i don't think uh, casey is just flying making opportunities it's just not able to get quite a big enough run to actually put it under the 55, excuse me. Uh, but Casey, finally, he finds it. Coming off of turn number four, James Harris got just a little tight. Now the eight to the inside, coming down to the turn number one. He's going to make this move look easy down to the turn number one. Move Casey up to the top spot. Well, one thing that James Harris told me, because a lot of times I rely on Harris for any information uh, for how these oh. trucks are handling on these uh, racetracks. And, and Harris told me, he said that uh, if somebody gets to your rear spoiler, uh, especially when the truck is getting really loose on the longer run. It's going to be a lot easier to pass them because you can kind of get them uh, all out of whack handling-wise. And I think that's exactly what we just saw there with Carter, Casey. I think Casey got to the back of the 55, unsettled him a little bit, and now we're seeing the, the reverse happen here with, with Harris. I can't believe Harris was able to pass him back. I'm mind-blown. I thought he was dead in the water, and he was just going to drop off of him. Did a great cutback move. I was able to get back to the right rear quarter panel, sorry, the left rear quarter panel, coming down to turn three last time, and now he's back up into the race lead. Like you were talking about, though, that is especially true through three and four. It is crazy how loose you get whenever somebody gets on your back bumper through three and four here in the trucks, and we saw it just a couple laps ago, and it's not going to be the last time we see it. We still have, what, 65 laps to go tonight, 75 laps to go, so we've got plenty of time. 65. Yeah kind of look through off the field to kind of see if there's any racing going on. Of course, there is. There's Brad Thacker and uh, William Ann Jr. They're racing kind of for fifth place. George Young, I think he's back here racing, racing Ray Kennison. Uh, that is for, of course, I think the 12th position. Uh, for the most part, though, we do see a lot of spreading out out here, and, and it's going green. So the guys that did uh, stay out on that last caution are probably hating life right now. One driver, though, that's actually doing surprisingly well, Nathan Meyer. I mean, he stayed out on – he's on some of the oldest tires out here. He's still running in fourth, and he's actually only about a tenth off the pace of our leaders. One driver in particular, though, that is not doing good right now, even though he's on the newer tires, is John Lucido. His tires are hurting. 31-4 last time by. That's about three-tenths off of what the leaders are doing that are on the same tires he is. Yeah, and I think if Casey got by Harris, he would be running even quicker. So I think oh. that Lucido would be even further off of that uh, time that the race leader's running. I think Casey's the quickest one on the track. It's just James Harris is doing a great job putting the rear bumper where it needs to be to give dirty air to the eight. But like you mentioned, Lucido has been struggling a little bit back there, but he ran really hard over the first 10 laps. Yeah. So it's not too big of a surprise that that right front tire uh, is hurting a little bit at this point. I mean, 31.7. So, I mean, he, uh, he is way off the pace compared to to the rest of the field here. I mean, you would expect that from someone that didn't take tires on that last stop. And uh, that, that's not the case for him. So I'm hoping that he is going to learn a valuable lesson. He's still in third, which is shocking. Two seconds back uh, is Nathan Meyer. So apparently the new tires did allow him to build quite a big gap. I got to say, I'm impressed with William Mann Jr.'s run here tonight. Up to fifth right now. Brad Thacker. These are guys we don't usually see up towards the fifth and sixth place mark. Looking really good tonight. Yeah, no kidding. They're doing absolutely amazing, you know, hovering around that fifth place spot. Casey looking back to the inside of James Harris through one and two this time. They're side by side for the race lead. Coming out of turn number two. Harris way up the racetrack trying to get on the throttle as early as possible. Got to stay away from that wall, though. And he does get the good enough run to clear the eight. Once again, coming down into turn number three. I can't believe James Harris is still sticking on this. 
Well, I think he's just got the advantage of the clean air. I mean, he, he's able to really uh, just try to run the line that Carter probably wants to. And Carter's just not able to get the uh, run on exit probably like he needs to as well. I mean, this is a racetrack that you want to kind of run the entire track, right? I mean, you, you want to arc the corner as much as you possibly can. And, and if you can't track up on the exit, then you're not going to be able to make the pass. I just, I, I'm just shocked that the 55 is able to hold on. I mean, the eight ran him down relatively easily, passed him, and then got repassed. I just, typically you don't see somebody get ran yeah. down like that and then able to repass the guy that just passed him and then hold on to it for a good chunk of laps and Harris doesn't look shaky up there. No, he doesn't. I think he's confident. I think that even though Carter is really, really fast and is really uh, pressing James, James is showing that, hey, I I'm really good at this racetrack. I know what I'm doing. And I think he's playing the defensive game. Harris is making the eight work harder, which is working his tires harder as well. I think that's got something to do with it as well, Austin. I think that's an absolutely great point. I still think the 8's tires are a little bit better than the 55's at this point, but because of how hard James Harris is making the 8 drive, it's it's kind of making that negligible. It's bringing the 8 back to the 55 in terms of tire wear. Oh, man, but the 55's way out yeah. of the groove, coming out of turn number 2. Had to get out of the gas, and that's going to give it to Casey. He finally made the mistake. James Harris going to fall back to P2 after he lost all that momentum coming out of turn number 2. Yeah, that's only it came down to a mistake, and uh, Harris is probably kicking himself over that. Now, if oh, here comes Nathan oh. Meyer. We talked about these guys not being able to make it on fuel for one stop. Nathan Meyer, there, there goes the uh, essentially the, the, the damn braking right there. So I would not be surprised that we're going to see the rest of the guys. Uh, that uh, you know, Andrew Hale came to pit road. So yeah, we are starting to see some of the guys that stayed out coming to pit road. Yeah, it's going to hurt really, really bad for those guys. They needed to make it to lap 55, 56 to be able to make no it way. on one stop. And they are about four or five laps short. And they had that caution period where they were able to save gas, and they still could not get to that point. So turns out to, to be a bad strategy call for Nathan Meyer, Andrew Hale, Tyler Meeks. I mean, uh, and Keegan Sabilo hasn't had to pit yet, but he will have to pit soon. These are all well, race Sabilo's winners. Sabilo did take fuel. He did come down, and he did put some gas oh, in it. Oh, you're correct. You're right. My bad. So he'll Good be point. able to stay out as long as Carter, James, and Lucido. He didn't take tires. That's the only thing that's kind of hurting him. That's, that, that is what explains that 8.5-second gap between him and the leader. But, yeah, no, I mean, there's. I love these strategies. I love that we're having this green run, that we can see these play out. And, and, and that's just – it's very – it's a very good series. You see a lot of respect out here on the racetrack, and, and Texas always leads to a, a good strategy-style uh, run, and, I, and that's what I always love. I love to see the numbers play out. Well, I've got a little bit of a lull in the action as just about everybody is, is spread out a good ways. We're going to use this opportunity to talk up our final presenting sponsor here on the evening, Blackstone Management Partners. Blackstone Management Partners guarantees an unrivaled one-on-one -on -one approach with every client, providing them the solutions and services required to keep their dynamic brands thriving and one step ahead of the ever-changing consumer marketplace. Blackstone comprises expertise in marketing, communications, talent management, and event management. Working with our clients, we not only use traditional but state-of-the-art platforms, including mobile marketing, experimental marketing, and cause-driven marketing. Visit www.bsmpartners.com. Big thank you to Blackstone Management Partners to, uh, for, for sponsoring the Champion Power Equipment Truck Series. And I apologize to them that I cannot stop stuttering whenever I read words off of a paper. I, I like watching cars go around a racetrack. It's a little easier for me. <laughs> Too many stutters on the, on the reading. It's kind of tough. Yeah, definitely understand. Battle, though, still happening for the sleep. These guys are not giving up on it. I mean... Harris still there, and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to get you some vocal lessons. Though. I know, man. I don't know what's going on. You can put me on a karaoke mic, and I can go up there and sing and not have a single stutter. But man, you make me read an ad read. And dude, I do basketball games in real life, and I never stutter in those ad reads. But for some reason, you put a headset on my head where I can't hear myself. I don't know. It's a uh, it's a little weird. It is definitely a little weird, but we still love you nonetheless. Uh, yeah, I need some training. Can you help me out? I'm well. You're no. You got You. St I know. I pick on this, but you got South Carolina education. I don't. I don't trust that. Oh, okay. All right. I just don't. Uh, I'm battle sorry, though I'm going not. on for fifth, as we can clearly see it on the screen now. Keegan Sabilo and Brad Thacker uh, in the midst of dueling at the moment. Uh, of course, 
Backer last time by 31.543. Definitely off the pace. Keegan Zabilo 31.4, so that pass uh, is going to be completed. We also do have Carter Casey and James Harris starting to run into some lap traffic here as well. As uh, the long run is definitely uh, happening here on the racetrack. A little bit of a back and forth though between Sabilo. But I just can't believe Harris is able yeah. to get back to the inside. Here we go. This is crazy. I can't believe he's still there with the eight. I thought Casey would pull away whenever he got in front. Oh, James Harris late down into the corner. I thought he'd dive it down to the bottom, but really, really late on the brakes for the 55, trying to edge the eight out to the wall. But the eight stays on that right rear quarter panel all the way down the back straightaway. Going to try to side draft the 55 down the back, down into turn number three to give him a run into the outside of the corner. But the 55 on the inside, shorter distance around the racetrack, able to retake the lead away from the eight. Heck of a move from James Harris. Oh, yeah, 100%. Fantastic driving from James Harris. These two are so even when it comes to their speed. I find that incredibly interesting. And uh, one thing I think this is, I think this race is going to be determined by pit road. I really do. I think that either Harris or Carter, they're going to have to perform perfectly on pit road. And that's going to be where it's going to be settled. Because these two are even when it comes to their speed. So it very well could come down to who does the undercut. And is that better or is overcutting and having newer tires for the last 40 or so laps more important? Yeah, I don't know. Here comes Casey trying to get back to the inside. What a great bit of driving from these two drivers. I mean, they are showing each other a ton of respect. That's for sure as uh, you see Harris goes up the racetrack. And lap times, I mean, their lap times are almost identical. Here, only separated by, I do believe, less than a hundred. Oh, there goes a little bit of a loose condition there from Harris, and that—that's what we were talking about. Guys, get—you uh, see, Casey gets on the back spoiler of the 55, and it just unsettles that truck. Yeah, now Casey tried to get to the outside of the 55. He'll have a pretty good run coming out of turn number two if he can hold the outside all the way around on the throttle. Perhaps he can get to the inside coming down the back straightaway. Harris, another late block in the caution Yellow flag. flag. I'm not sure what brought this yellow out. We were having some guys go down green uh, pit, pit flag, or pit flag. We were having some green flag piss off. <laughs> I can't talk either. I need lessons. But I See, think I it might have been Ray Kennison here. Yeah. I think I need some lessons too. Let's go sign up together. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine with me. Uh, no Alabama and no South Carolina. We need somewhere with a different dialect. Uh, <laughs> get the Southern out. Uh, but Kennison, coming through three and four, kind of ironic that a uh, green flag truck is bringing out the yellow flag. Oh, trying to get to oh, pit road. Timothy Backcock, to nowhere road. to go. Great job by Garth Schneider, by the way, getting through there. He should, he probably should have hit uh, Babcock on the outside, but just skated through. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Kennison. He was just getting ready to come to pit road and uh, probably just did not give the warning that maybe uh, they were needing here. We're looking on board with Babcock. It's Babcock's course coming through three and four. You see Kennison slowing down. Yeah, really. Kennison moves up the track a little bit there, and that could have been what kind of confused the 99. That's going to be some heavy front-end damage to the uh, 99 of Babcock. As we can see, Harris and, and Casey coming to pit road. It should be the entire field, for the most part, uh, coming to pit road here. Now, this does put Nathan Meyer on the lead lap and should be even again on strategy. I think Andrew Hale, could he get a wave around? Yeah, I think he will. So we're going to see some drivers get wave arounds and maybe not be able to take tires as a result of this, too. Yeah, Hale, Meeks will have to take the wave around. Uh, so they'll still be in a, in a poor situation, but if a caution comes out, they'll be all right. Uh, but just on that replay, we saw just a little bit of miscommunication can cause a lot of damage out on the racetrack coming to these green flag pit cycles. Casey gets off of pit road first. James Harrison second. We're going to use this opportunity to take our final commercial break of the racing action. Stick with us, and we're going to take you to the checkered flag on the other side.
Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back to the Champion Power Equipment iRacing Truck Series from the Texas Motor Speedway. Carter Casey leading the way on the inside of the front row coming off of turn number four as the pace car pulls off James Harris, the guy he has been battling all night long on his outside. Coming out of the green flag with 44 laps remaining at the line. Carter Casey stops the gas, gets us down to the line, and brings us down to turn number one with John Lucido all over the back of him. Yeah, we'll see if Lucido learns this lesson from that last run because he burned his tires slap up. He definitely doesn't seem like it. He is putting a lot of pressure here. But here comes the 55 muscling his way by on the inside. This is going to be an awesome battle, I have uh, no doubt. So as you can see, here comes Keegan Savila. See, savila has been like, I've been hanging out all night long. It's time for me to get involved. Yeah, Sabilo hasn't basically been allowed to race for the past 40 laps because he's been on a completely different strategy, had 20 lap older tires than everybody else. He was just hanging on. Now, he feels like Superman out there because he's even with everybody else. Sabilo now challenging for the race lead. Look at him hit the brakes in the middle of the corner to fall back in line. Tried to get the uh, momentum back to undercut the 55. Unfortunately, I think he just killed the momentum a little bit too much in the middle of the corner. Also got Timothy Bath on racing right now with George Young and, a, a, and a well, uh, William Mann Jr. We do have some battling going all over this racetrack course. Green flag just came back out. I think Lee Brad Thacker almost just tagged the wall. This is a very easy racetrack to hit the wall in the uh, quad oval. Um, you know, just, just like Charlotte. I mean, that just sudden the sudden angles at this racetrack, if you're running that top side, very easy to, uh, to hit it. And uh, luckily, I don't think anybody hit it. Oh, John Lazito hits the outside wall. He got oh, right rear no. down the back straightaway. Timothy Babcock, I believe, just absolutely destroyed John Lacito down the back. 73, having a tough time getting back going here. This had to be a match. Yeah, he is missing his front bumper. Let's take a look back and see what happened here. See Babcock to the outside. Chases him down the racetrack. Oh, oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Just chases him down the racetrack. Babcock into the right rear of the 73. And, well, yeah. it's never good whenever your front bumper's moving faster than your truck. Yeah, I would definitely put that on 99. I don't know what was going on there that led him to come down like that. But, unfortunately, 70, 73 Lucido paid the price. That's unfortunate. He, fast race, he had a fast truck, too. Yeah, he's flying up here. Yeah, he got his tires a little bit that last time, but he's still at top three speed. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and this looks like the, I don't know, the 99, he went, he looked like he was getting ready to come down once, and then he came, then he went back up towards the wall again. Yeah. Like, he's he's side drafting here, all fine. I, he's going for the side draft, but it's it, it's a little too aggressive, right? We've got 40 laps yeah. to go. On this restart, you're, you're saving tires, right? So, you, I don't know. I, I get what he's going for. Just, I, I, I don't know, save that for the last five laps. Yeah. A restart with five to go, I get it. Definitely feel bad for Lucido. He's going to have a lot of track position. He's got. I'm glad he's able to keep rolling and make it to pit road and, and probably stay on the lead lap at least. Uh, but he's going to have a lot of track position. He's going to have to get back. Uh, so that's, that is unfortunate for that uh, that 73 machine. Had a, had a top five car, that's for sure. That's a big break for a couple of the guys that took the wave around, though. Tyler Meeks, uh, Kilgore in the two. Both those guys took the wave around under the last caution and are going to be able to take four tires here. So they'll actually have two or three lap fresher tires than everybody in front of them. Not a huge advantage, but if this thing runs green to the end, that very well could be the difference for somebody like Tyler yeah. Meeks. Uh, Tyler Meeks has top five speed, and now he's got a little bit fresher tires. I'd be watching out for that seven. I believe high in the 13 
also I think he got the lucky dog. And unfortunately for Andrew Hale, he is still stuck a lap down. Yeah, that's un unfortunate for Hale. It just always seems like, you know, when you're last season's champion, it just it always seems like the next season you're just not as as good. I don't know what that is about it. I I I've seen we're seeing that this this year I think with Ryan Blaney. You know? <laughs> Well, to be fair, we're seeing it with Ford all across the board. Ryan Blaney's the only Ford in the top ten of the points, so he's yeah, he's yeah. the only one doing his job. To be fair, oh, I mean, but you've seen it with Chase Elliott too. Like Chase Elliott, oh, when yeah. he get next year, just nothing. True. He, well, well, to be fair, Chase was good in the regular season, and then he was nothing in the playoffs that year. That's what was crazy. Like, it looked like he was going to have a good defense season, and then he disappeared in the last ten races, and he hasn't shown back up since. I just know Hale last year or last season. He was. He seemed unstoppable. I mean, it just it just doesn't seem like that's the same hail we have here tonight. I don't. I don't know. Uh, but we'll see. You know, still still a long race to go, and uh, if he can get back on the lead lap, I think that would uh, do wonders for him. And we saw earlier in this race, he was able to work his way up into the top ten. Yeah, I just don't really think that he had the opportunity for his strategy to go right. Uh, I mean, in the early going, he was saving tires and was a was just working up the field in that first run whenever the caution flag came out. And then he stayed out, and the strategy just didn't play out for him as a lot of other guys came down pit road. He had to pit before the entire rest of the pack, and unfortunately for him, as soon as everybody else starts pitting, all of a sudden a caution during those pit stops, he's trapped the lap down, and he just hasn't been able to get it back. And I believe he was actually ahead of Brian High in the 13 on, the, on that caution. But I think that Andrew Hill might have had contact somewhere, and it cost him Maybe. the lucky dog. Yeah, that would be unfortunate if that's the case. Could very well be. It could very well be. Quite a long caution uh, period we have here. Surprised we haven't seen those pace car lights go out. I know these guys down here, uh, time, right? <laughs> gotta be. Because I agree, guys, it's been long. These guys out here gotta be getting a little antsy, right? I, I hope that we don't have too many more cautions, because if they last this long, I, you know, I want to go to bed before midnight. <laughs> I don't Not think we're going to last that long. And it, hey, if we get a nice side-by-side -side finish uh, going to the line like we got last season, I'll stay up until 3 in the morning to call that. All right, come on now. Yeah, I'm going to be getting up. <laughs> I'm not going to be up here at 3 in the morning. You get yeah, to call I, it I, up I, by yourself. Yeah, yeah, brother. yeah. I'm definitely, speaking, I'm definitely speaking for myself on this one. Uh, you can tell <laughs> me about it tomorrow. I, <laughs> I might be a little bit more addicted to this than you are. Um, if I'm willing to stay up until 3 a.m., I might be the most addicted person on the planet if I was willing to do that for <laughs> for high racing. But I don't know. We'll see. I have called a 24-hour race before, and some of that was at 3 in the morning. So, yeah, I mean, no, I, I called an endurance race before. I think it was like I think They're it was fun. six hours or something. It was pretty long. Mm -hmm. I had a 12-hour Sebring uh, a couple weeks ago after the rain update, and man, we got some rain in the middle of it, and it was fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I uh, bet to that see those sports cool. cars run in the rain, man. It's great. Yeah, I got to give uh, I race a round of applause on that one. That's for sure. He's getting ready to get this thing back underway. Yeah, it now, took him years, but it's fantastic. Sherry Walker in the comments saying, let's go 55. So it looks like the uh, James Harris squad shows back up again for uh, the second week in a row. Yeah, James Harris, probably the fan favorite, I got to say. He's probably got the most people that show up in the YouTube chat week after week. So James Harris, he's going to be the one leading us down to that green flag, and he's got a couple contenders up there with him. Giga Savilo and Carter Casey in that number eight, all lined up, one, two, three, coming to the line. And now Savilo and Carter, they're side by side, coming down to turn number one. Yeah, we'll see who's going to be able to win this race. Of course, uh, looks like Carter is going to get uh, cleared. Of the 77, 77 just falls right in. I, I think that might have been on purpose just so he can get the run on exit of two. It absolutely was. And then did you see what the eight did? He pinched off the exit of two so that Keegan Sabilo couldn't get to his inside. Unfortunately for him, Sabilo was not having any of it. Still stuffed that 77 down to the inside of the racetrack and took that second place spot back from Carter Casey. Yeah, I got to say that was really, uh, really smart of Sabilo. He sacrificed the restart just to be able to kind of gain to wind that truck up on the exit too uh, really uh some next level stuff here comes william mann jr though He's oh they're making behind the oh. two the two is hard to the inside ball oh. kilgore gets turned oh, oh. or schneider coming kilgore. across the racetrack after the two came back with a bad rejoin started spinning like a beyblade back there yeah he did and 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 i gotta be honest i think kilgore 
made a big mistake there not holding the brakes. He should have tried to hold those brakes because, I mean, I think that would have avoided a lot of that carnage that Snyder had there. If he had just held the brakes, Snyder, there was nothing he could do right there. Like you said, they played action, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can tell that's a big turn. He got heavy left. Where's the brakes at? Like, you, this is where you'd be hitting the brake. Never oh, touch the brakes. Yeah, that's, that's about as unpredictable as you can get while you wrecking. Do I that. mean, one, you're going backwards, and two, you're not holding the brakes. So. I mean, I'm not blaming the accident on no, Kilgore no. at all. I'm just saying that if you do, if you're involved in the accident, it's a, it's a rule that you just hold the brake. In real life, you do it because you don't want to get killed. Uh, on the yeah. on the iRacing service, you do it because you don't want your car to get damaged. You want to continue. That that's definitely not the uh, oh. that's not the way to keep your car from getting damaged. I mean, yeah. goodness gracious, parts were shedding. Yep, ruin Garth Snyder's night. That's unfortunate. I mean, Snyder does have a fashion pair, but yeah. if he gets wrecked oh. again, then yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's major damage on that too. Let's see, I want to see how That's sideways. Important. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh yeah. my! You see him grabbing? Holy cow! That thing was sideways, going straight. And looking at uh, the yeah. actual incident itself, it looks like it was force involved with the the 73 of Lucido, and I think the two, yeah, the two got loose coming off of turn two, came yeah, down into a, the 73. Can we get a, a look on the arm on board of Lucido? I want to see how far down the the two came off the wall. Yeah, I, don't uh, know I think I think Lucido's on board would probably be the best. Uh, judgment here on fault, whether the two came down or whether Lucido didn't give enough room off the corner. We're going to get that wound up for you real quick so we can perhaps make that judgment. Gosh, that poor two. I mean, I, I know <laughs> I say poor two. Uh, poor Schneider. Right great. Yeah, poor Schneider for sure. Uh, but I, I don't like driving a car that sideways or uh, with the suspension broke like that. But here it is on board of Lucido. Yeah, the two came down. I gotta, I gotta be honest. The two came down. I mean, obviously the 73 is tracking out of the corner, uh, but you're entitled to use the second lane off the wall whenever you're the inside car. And the two definitely got a little loose and and came down on the exit. Yeah, it's um, definitely unfortunate. And uh, you know, I, also that we're having a few cautions here, kind of back to back. I mean, we had such a long green run that was looking. Uh, it's really, really fortunate, or I should, you know, just, just fun to see how that was going to all play out. But now we're having some cautions that are kind of leading to some short runs. Wondering what this is going to lead to. You know, this is also though bringing people back on lead lap. You see Andrew Hale; he's now back on lead lap. Finally, that's what he needed, man. Now he's going to get some tires, and again, all these people didn't pit. So now I was talking about how a couple of these guys pitted under the last caution, like Tyler Meeks, who got his lap back under the last caution. So he had one or two lap pressure tires than everybody else. Well, we ran, let's see how many laps we ran under that last one. Another two. So um, a total of five green flag laps on the tires of everybody that hasn't pitted over the last couple cautions, uh, which is not a lot, but for somebody like Andrew Hale, who's starting in 14th, who's putting on four freshies right now, uh, he'll, he will have a five lap advantage over everybody. I don't think that'll that's be huge big. for the first 10 or 20 laps, but the last 10 laps of the race, I think it'll be massive. Oh yeah, that's gonna be big. I mean, that that, that could be quite significant to where, and Meeks I mean, has moved up to 8th on the new tires too by the way yeah that, that's another thing I mean and that caution coming out kind of lessens the gap between him and the leader ooh true Meeks has so, a chance man yeah no I mean our, our producer aptly picked Tyler Meeks and, and you know he's a good choice I, I just feel like Meeks' uh, stock has been going up a lot more here lately I think a lot of drivers got to be honest. Stocks have been going up. I mean, like William Mann Jr. I mean, he's been running up in the top five a lot today. Yeah, what in the world is going on with William Mann? No, dis no disrespect intended to William Mann Jr., but um, typically he's not a third or fourth place driver. He's like ninth, which is respectable, right? You're still top ten, roughly on the on the fringes of the top ten. I mean, you come to a racetrack right here, and I got to say the same to Brad Dacker uh, in the 56 and fourth yeah. place. Both of them are running in the top four. Typically, we see them around 8th to eight to 11th, so great run for those two guys. Oh, yeah, 100%. No, they're doing fantastic. Um, I think we did see Keegan Sabilo. I think he came to pit road he as did. well. I just noticed that. But he's back in 11th. Interesting strategy play there from the 77. Yeah. So a lot of strategies, a lot of moving parts right here as we're coming up, I do believe, to 31 to go in the green flag line. Nice! That was impressive, Brian. 
<laughs> well, how was that impressive? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not used to the. I'm not used to you being so quick with it. <laughs> My. I mean, if you if you grew up three hours south up in North Georgia, I could see it. Maybe three oh, hours north wow. up in Charlotte, I could see it. I'm in Russian up. You know, I, I went but back. Myrtle to... Beach? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, 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 you know, I started going back to school trying to get my GED. I just, I just, <laughs> the only stuff they add up over in Myrtle Beach is how many beer bottles they've got in their trash can. I mean, good oh God. <laughs> Everybody, anyway. if you want to boycott Austin Estrom, uh, I'll give you his address <laughs> after the... Uh... Oh, James Harris <laughs> leads us back down to the, <laughs> to the Greek flag. 31 laps to go as our native South Carolinian so expertly pointed out. Yeah, really good start there for Harris. Of course, Carter Casey able to get single file for second place. Battle going on right now, though, for fourth, I do believe. Nathan Meyer battling with Brant Thacker. William Ann Jr. now under fire for Meyer. Side by side for third. Here comes Nathan Meyer. We can't count him out. That's one driver. He does have an extra set of tires to play with. Here he comes to the inside of Carter Casey. I think he's just as good as Casey and, and Harris. Add 24 to the mix. I know the cautions have broke this thing up and made it a little bit of a hard watch through the middle of this, but I guarantee you it's going to be for the benefit of this finish. This pack just completely on top of each other with 30 laps to go. Oh. Nathan Meyer to the inside of James Harris. This is what I'm talking about. Big moves down to the inside and a big block attempt from the 55. Side drafting the 24 all the way through the corner and the caution flag flies. Yeah, that was insane. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. Gosh. Harris had a lot of, I got to say, Harris had a lot of uh, courage to try to block the 24 like that. But I think he realized, like, I shouldn't be doing this and came back up. I think we, uh, I'm not sure who was involved in that crash. It might have been a 13, possibly. Uh, Brian High, if it was the 13. Might have been Colby uh, Jackson here. We're going to see if we can't find out. Looks like Colby Jackson is kind of running up on that top side. Oh, yeah, he turned Colby. in as if he wasn't three wide. And it's, it's sad to say that the veritable here that's been involved in all these crashes has been the 73, but the 73 is not at fault. <laughs> yeah, it's I was just, about to say, I don't know the last, the last three cautions he's been in, but I actually don't think any of them have been his fault. No, they haven't been his fault. Good save by the three, by the way. He, sh he really should have damaged that truck. Um, but also, considering he saved it, I really wish we didn't get the caution. I mean, that's pretty deck up. Well, he's pretty sideways. I can understand why, but still, that's a heck of a save right there. Um, I know we said we were going to take our last commercial break last uh, a couple laps ago, but we've had a couple of cautions here. So I think after this replay, we're going to take one more just to give a little shout out to our, uh, a couple of our sponsors and give you know me a chance to catch my breath. After Wow, what is uh, he's oh my goodness, he's over 180 degrees turning to the right to save that heck of a job from uh, Jackson and the three and a great way to take us to commercial.
Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back to the Champion Power Equipment iRacing Truck Series on the grid from Texas Motor Speedway, which sucks in real life, but is actually fantastic on the surface somehow, and we're about to have a fantastic finish. I'm telling you right now, this race has set us up perfectly for this. Restart coming to 25 laps to go. This feels like this is the season opener from last year where we had that amazing side-by-side -side photo finish. I, I think we're on for something pretty similar here tonight with Nathan Meyer. Coming out of turn number four, pace car getting ready to pull off of the banking and down to pit road, hopefully for the final time tonight. 25 laps to go. Nathan Meyer, James Harris into the restart zone. Nathan Meyer to the gas first and to the green flag. Yeah, we had a little bit of a drama on the green flag there. I saw uh, Tyler Meeks kind of not go right on time, and that caused Keegan Sabilo to almost nail his rear end. Of course, now makes his back up speed. Now he's going to try to see if he can challenge William Mann Jr. Now, you mentioned that he is on newer tires. To, uh, I do believe Keegan Sabilo is as well. I think that's going to come into play here as Nathan Meyer tries to hold off the 55. Of course, the native Texan. Look at how close he is to the back of the 24, trying to get that truck out of sorts. Yeah, you were talking about it earlier. You get up to that back bumper, and especially on the older tires, you can get them a little loose. Here on the newer tires, the 24 was able to hold steady and able to keep that back end nice and still coming out of the corner and hold that bottom line. Here it is, though. James Harris was able to get the outside coming into turn number one, held it all the way around turns one and two, and now they're side by side down into turn three. Yeah, one thing about this racetrack, though, being side by side slows you down, and that is what is causing the eight of Carter Casey to catch up and he's essentially playing kingmaker here as he pushes the 55 to probably try to get around the 24. Yeah, what does Casey do here with them running so hard side by side? Still 23 laps to go. Very possible the 24 and the 55 could burn up their stuff a little bit too early. So does Casey just kind of mind his P's and Q's back there and just save that right front tire? Yeah, I don't know. We do have some more battles going on. Uh, Keegan Sabilo, or no, actually, no, Keegan is trying to pass, I should say. So we do have some stuff going on over the place, but this battle for the lead is insane right now, almost three wide. As you can see, fanning out as Casey. Not wow. no, not really sure where he's going to be. Here comes Tyler Meeks. Oh! Wow, look at the move from James Harris all the way to the bottom of the track. He, he touched the apron a little bit there. The run he got off the two was massive, man. Now, where did that come from? From the 55, and then the huge move to the bottom. Almost contact through the first dog leg of the front straightaway. Carter Casey's just like, where the heck do I have to go? And look at this. The number seven of Tyler Meeks has all of a sudden entered the fray. Look at him up in fourth place on the outside. Yeah, and I think he's got a little bit newer tires in these uh, top three here as well. So this could definitely get interesting. As we're going to take a look back at, I do believe, this move from James Harris. Look at the run. He gets right here, just massive turbo boost as he jumps to the bottom. And look at the narrow entry into three. I don't know how he was able to maintain the speed to make this pass happen. What blows my mind is he barely turned the steering wheel down the back straightaway. And on that, even in the in-car view, but especially the outside car view, whenever it happened live, you could see that right front fender weighs off the ground as he tried to correct it back to the right and keep it on the racetrack. But it was such a it was such a minor tug of the steering wheel, and there was that much reaction from the trunk. It just shows how big the weight transfer is in these things and how important it is through the corners to have that weight transfer correct. Uh, I know that that wasn't through the corner, but I'm telling you, if that was a little offset coming out of turn number two, that might not have worked out as good for the 55. Yeah, I think he's too. I think that's uh, 
think that's definitely what's happening right here. <laughs> that was a that was a leap and a half. I think. Uh, the, look at this. Some oh. more fighting here. Nathan Meyer getting really aggressive. I just want to put in this thing. I don't think he was cheating. I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> you had mentioned something about a baseball team on his race car earlier. That. Uh, oh yeah, yeah if it was the Astros. Okay, yeah. Astros. If he had the Astros on, that would have been a great joke. Honestly, that would have been awesome. Right? Unfortunately, it's the Rangers. Yeah. Oh, South Carolina. I'm sorry. Uh, well, well, I mean, that's not your fault. He put the team on the truck. I'll give you, you know, I'm not gonna, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm going to rag on the South Carolina stuff, but only whenever it's deservedly so. We do uh, deserve some, some uh, you know, attention <laughs> to this battle for the lead here is Nathan Meyer is all over this 55. And, of course, Casey entered the fray as well. Here comes Sabila. So this is a oh top five battle right here, all on top of each other. They are separated by, I do believe, three tenths. Throw a blanket over Sabilo's on the newest tires, but he's got nowhere to go. I mean, he's stuck behind everybody on the inside. Can he make it three wide? Maybe with Meyer and Casey at some point? Maybe, but he's he's stuck side by side with the seven, and they're going to be side drafting each other. Somebody's way off the racetrack, down the bottom of the racetrack, on the back straightaway. It might have, I couldn't quite tell who it was. Way in the back, though. Uh, might have been in uh, Hulawig. No, I think it was Brian High all the way on the end of the back straightaway, but a little bit further up. Carter still trying to get past the 24 of Nathan Meyer, not able to do it down to turn one as Meyer just holds that right rear fender all the way around the corner. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Casey getting really, really tight on exit. If I was in Sabilo's shoes, I would be very, very patient here. Just try to save my stuff because eventually you're going to get past to these guys, I do believe. Because if you look at the lap times from Sabilo right now, uh, 30.392, he's about a tenth faster uh, than the drivers ahead of him. So if he just keeps this up and just really just gets them one at a time, that's all he's got to do. But that was very close. Woo. I know I'm just making random noises, man, but they just keep, like, throwing little tiny blocks at each other down the dog leg or down at the turn number three. That just has me wincing and just, oh, they're going to wreck. Oh, they're going to wreck. Ooh. It's just scaring me every single time, man. Uh, Nathan Meyer that time really pitching Sabilo through the second dog leg of the front straightaway. Able to get away with it. But you're not going to get away with that for the entire rest of the race. Only 14 laps yeah. to go. Those blocks are going to get bigger, and the people trying to pass are going to stop pulling out of those moves because we're getting down to the end of this thing. You got to go. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, the closer we get to the end of this thing, the less, uh, I say, the give and take is going to be uh, prevalent. I mean, one thing about it, whenever you block someone, there's two people that are in that equation. As we see a big move to the inside for Keegan Sabilo trying to get the pass completed on the 70 or 24, I should say. And like I said, there's two people in that equation. If one of them don't agree, there's a wreck. So, hey, what are the letters called in uh, equations? Uh, var variables. <laughs> nice, nice. I love I it. I had to make sure I said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we're learning. We're learning. James Harrison. Yeah. That was good. I almost had you. James Harris leading the way <laughs> down to <did>. number three. <laughs> Carter Casey trying to make the move, though. Not quite. Still what, coming to 12 laps to go this time for Casey. It's, I feel like, I feel like Sabilo's in the catbird seat, though, but they're, yeah. they might be side by side for the race lead here. Carter Casey gets to the outside of James Harris. I mean, I, like I said, if I was in Sabilo's shoes, I would just bide my time. I mean, just wait for the perfect moment and take him three wide. Hey, buddy, here. And here it is, right to the inside, three wide. This could be him taking the lead. Three wide, down the back straightaway. King and Sabilo to the bottom on the newest tires. James Harris in the middle at his home racetrack. And Carter Casey on the outside in his wow. debut. But the caution flag's going to ruin it. And that's going to give Sabilo the lead. This could be... Then, then again, though, does this caution provoke Harris, Carter, and all these other guys to go down pit road and take a set of tires? If I... If, oh, Brad Thacker's oh, still getting Brad turned. Thacker. We're what? Timothy Babcock just uh, wrecked Brad Thacker. Um... And then I think Babcock got DQ. Oh, no. Yep, Brad. So apparently we're, we're seeing something happen here where an admin has removed uh, Timothy Babcock from the server. Oh, wow. So something happened there. Ooh. And then we definitely Thacker just need to here. keep it on Thacker here to see what happened with Babcock. I'm sure Babcock came and got revenge on the front straightaway. Yeah, that is 100% correct. Yeah. This is after the fact. And this, no wonder he was removed from the server. This is something you just don't do. I mean, I understand if, if somebody wrecks you under green and, and you might not even be happy about it. You might, They might even be at fault. 
But you don't do this under the cost. It's just you just don't do that. And I got to point out a lot of people are coming out pit road too. And see, you know, really, I mean, I, I I could see that this this being on both of these guys. I really feel like Babcock was trying to block Brad Thacker. Brad Thacker came up a little bit, got into Babcock. So I could see this being a, a racing incident, just the nature of a late race uh, incident there. But this right here, this is just you can, you don't do that. You just don't do that. Like you said, in that in that blocking equation going down into turn number three, there's two variables. There's the lead car and there's the rear car. Lead car there, Timothy Babcock, did block him down all the way to the bottom. Thacker didn't lift, and he did wash off the racetrack. So, yeah, you can put it more on Thacker. But to your, to your point earlier, Timothy did throw a pretty hefty block down into turn number three. Yeah, and it's just... I mean, that's just, that's just the nature of the beast, you know, here at Texas. I mean, that, that's Max. literally one of the keys to the race is about blocking so you um, knew it you had it picked man you knew well, coming into this thing what you, we were gonna to see. be honest with you i gotta say I, I went and asked the guys whoa colby jackson just got removed panel. from the server oh no i'm sorry to cut you off but i'm trying to figure out what the heck people are getting removed for i'm not exactly sure why colby was removed i've i i'm trying to figure it out Um, I'm not. I don't know. I really don't. I didn't see Colby. I saw. I know Colby was somewhat involved in the accident aftermath, what? kind of. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I Colby, Colby Jackson got intentionally wrecked by uh, Kilgore into turn three on lap 100, under caution. Was that oh, premeditated? Wow. I think. What is? Hold on a second. I, I saw a little bit of brake check in there. So I'm not sure. Well, this, this isn't is even really, this is after right because that's that in front on. of this that that was just i think when he just was removed yeah. i saw him disappear yeah. i don't know yeah. why kilgore was upset with jackson in the first place i'm i'm literally rewinding yeah. at 16 times speed all the way back to lap 95 jackson hasn't touched anybody under green i'm gonna go back forward just to make sure um lap 99 nothing uh on the accident he pinched george young down to the inside of the track but like they're dodging an accident. George never lifted, even though the 56 is sideways. Um, and so then they go down to the turn of one. Like well, hold on. There's yeah. a big thing to this. And then Jackson retaliates to the 48 going down to the turn of one uh, because the 48 didn't really give him a lot of room to dodge that wreck. And they door bang all the way down the back straight away. Um, and then, and that wrecks George Young coming off of turn number two on lap 100 under the yellow. So that's, I guess, why he got kicked from the server but for some reason Kilgore decided to take it take matters into his own hands half a lap later and take out Colby Jackson but he didn't get removed from the server so I really I, I don't know there's a lot yeah no I definitely uh I mean I saw Kilgore you know beating the back here we go right here yeah I like this Jackson's upset caution. because George Caution's Young out right here right yeah yeah during the caution George Young dove under Colby Jackson, even though they're wrecking, I mean, right in front of him. I'm gonna, honestly, George Young put Colby Jackson in a terrible spot, but then Colby Jackson went and ran him up the racetrack under caution, which he shouldn't have done, and I guess if you're going to kick out Babcock, you got to kick out him. But then Kilgore did the same thing to Jackson down into turn three half a lap later, so I, I, I don't know. But whatever it is, I at this point, we're going to put it uh, on the back burner because we've got a heck of a finish coming up. Uh, Brad Thacker stayed out on the racetrack, did not take tires. And now he is the race leader. Did he? Did he? Maybe he took two. Uh, I need my producer Darby to maybe check that for me. I thought that he stayed out. Uh, stay out. He's 19 laps on his stint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thacker did um, stay out. Thank you. So yes. everybody else on four freshies though. Yeah, this is going to be a little scary here. Um, yes, late race drama here in the uh, Champion Power Equipment Truck Series. And hey, what? It's got me on the edge of my seat. I'm telling. You, I feel like I'm watching a uh, late night uh, sorry, soap opera or something like that. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Oh, and this finish is going to come back and get out of a, come out of a coma or something. Well, here it is. Eight laps to go this time by. Sorry, I should say seven laps to go this time by. Brad Thacker in the race lead on old tires. How long can he hold on? Who's it going to be that gets by him? Cody, the green flag. A little bit of tire spin. Going to open the door to the outside already of Keegan Sabilo. Who's going to take the lead before we get down to turn one? And that's to be expected. I mean, we talked about tire wear being a big deal here. And already we're seeing the 56 off the pace. I mean, he's got about 20 lap old tires. I mean, this is uh, not ideal for the 56. I just don't really understand why he would want to stay out here. 
Keegan Sabila, though, right now in control, but I don't know for how long. The 55 looking like he's hungry for some victory. Oh, he's starving. He is starving. He won last weekend. He is still starving. He's unbelievably selfish, trying to hog all the victories to himself in that 55. And he might do it. He's on the outside of the 77. Six laps to go this time by with a huge push from the 24. Oh, Brad Thacker tight. Tight, tight, tight through one and two. Just about into the door. Yes, he does shove him up the racetrack. Three wide. Spinner <laughs> down the back straight away to eight. Oh, what a save. Carter. No, he does over, turn yeah. it down the back. Unbelievable. I thought he had that saved. Wow. Yeah, Carter Casey and, and I do believe Brad Thacker touching there. And that Casey almost had that save. That was so close. You see right here, contact between the 56 and the 8. And the 8, <sighs> trying to avoid the 73. Was able to almost save it. Comes up into Brian High. I'll tell you what, Lucido should be counting his blessings here. Because he, I mean, the 8 almost smashed the 73 right there. That could have been huge. I mean, that should have been huge, to be fair. Thacker kind of abused the left side of the eight there, coming through one and two, and uh, just kind of used Carter up there. And unfortunately for for Carter Casey, it just didn't end well. He's been fast all night. Maybe could have won this race if one of those green flag yeah. runs stayed green. But unfortunately, he's uh, going to finish probably at the back of the lead lap now. He's going to have to come down pit road, get some damage repair. Probably has that fast repair still, so he'll be all right, but he didn't use up those tires a little bit on the spin, and he'll be at the back of the lead lap, so it'll be tough for Casey to make that up on a green-white checkered. Yeah, I got to say, I mean, Casey is arguably one of the best long-run cars uh, in this series right now, or, or in this race, I should say. Um, and he was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with James Harris like it was nothing, so I, I definitely think that that is uh, very disappointing, to say the least, and... Uh, you know, I think I think Brad Thacker learned a pretty big lesson that you know, don't stay out on old tires like that, um, especially at a track like this. I mean, you could maybe see that at a at a super speedway. You know, that of course being something you could do, but these trucks. I mean, especially with how loose or how the handling woes that you have whenever you're on older tires, clear as day. I mean, he was well off the pace even on the jump. And uh, I don't know if he's going to come down now and get a set. If I was in his shoes, I would, because then that would. At least, uh, make what if he's used them all? Newer. Yeah, he might have, but I mean, I, I no, I don't think so. He's got three, he's pitted think, three times. Oh, uh, well, well, that is how many tire sets we have under behind the pits. Yeah, that's true. And maybe he spun out one of those and had to take tires whenever we didn't necessarily catch it. So, if if that's the case and he doesn't have tires, then I get it. Um, yeah, no, but I if it, yeah. I mean, if he has a tire set, I agree with you 100% because I thought Thacker had a great run going being in the top six or so anyway towards the end of this race. So why would you potentially throw it away if you do have the tire set? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I'm just, it, you know, it's definitely, if you're on older tires, though, you have to be able to kind of be able to control your vehicle. True. Uh, you know, not to hurt the eight like that. Now, of course, I'm sure Brad did not mean for that to happen. Still unfortunate, though, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, you there, there could be nobody out here that has tires left now. We could be just, um, you know, I do think you're right about that. That last that last pit stop where everybody came down, everybody that had a set took it, except for Thacker. I feel like Thacker, uh, well, I think he didn't have a, a set, and that's why he stayed out. Um, but I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm trying to, or I'm struggling trying to figure out where he used that third set. Uh, but regardless, he didn't come down pit road, so I got I to gotta think he didn't have it. Yeah, I don't know either. But I, I, I do know Keegan's right now in the lead, and, I do believe we're going to have ourselves a green-white checkered. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it, depending on if the, if the pace car lights go out this time, it'll be an unofficial green-white checkered. If they don't, it will be an official green-white checkered. And uh, I think we might get that finish we were all hoping for. Well, actually, I think we're getting an official green-white checkered regardless because we'll get if we get one to go this time, it'll be two to green. Or it'll be one to green, but with two laps to go. Yeah, I think you are correct. So, yeah. So we will be starting our green-white checkers, and I think we only have, what, two? Two in the yeah, uh, Champion Power Equipment Truck Series? I'm pretty confident in that. It's kind of tough whenever you announce seven races in a week to remember which ones have how many, how many uh, green-white checkers. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Well, and I, I can't find it. I don't, I don't call as many races as I used to, so... Now, I know you used to be crazy with this, man. Now this is the one you've got on your plate. I'm glad that you stuck around with me, man. I'm so happy. Yeah, 
Got to hang out, my boy. Yep, looks like uh, this looks like we are gonna have. Yeah, this is gonna be an official green white jacket. One of two. They have two in here. This is gonna be it, more than likely. I feel like we're gonna get past this this first lap under good. green. I, I really do think so. I think we're gonna get a good, nice little two lap dash to the finish. And I mean, this sets us up perfect to be just like the race last season. That was unreal. Who you got now? I know we had our race picks at the beginning, but who are you thinking? I'm gonna stick with Harris. I think that's probably I'm the right bet. Him. I think that you're probably right on. Uh, my pre-race pick was uh, Nathan Meyer in third, and I, I honestly think I got to stick with him too. I think he's in a great spot where if the 55 and 77 rough each other up a little bit, I, I mean Nathan Meyer's in the in the position to just float on through on the inside groove, and he's going to have that good restart starting on the inside. So I think Nathan Meyer, Nathan Meyer might surprise here from that third place spot. I mean, all of our picks are not in bad spots. I mean, even Meeks is in the top five right now. I mean, uh, that means so we all I, know no, what we're I, talking about. Yeah, no, I, I feel like there's a good chance that one of our guys wins. But I mean, Sabilo, I think he deserves one after what happened last week too. Keegan Sabilo deserves it. James Harris on the outside wants it bad. Who's it going to be through the restart zone potentially for the final time tonight? Keegan Sabilo through the gears easily to the lead, and look at James Harris able to duck down into that second place spot in front of Nathan Meyer. Yeah, we saw earlier that that second place driver was able to get a massive run on the exit of the two uh, before, but it looks like I don't think Harris is going to get it as well. Nathan Meyer all over Sabilo here as we're going to come to possibly the white flag. We're going through three and four. Andrew Hale, where did he come from up in the top five? Andrew Hale has not been in the top five the entire night. All of a sudden, he's running third at the white flag. One lap to go this time. By that time, it was Keegan Sabilo by two thousandths of a second. What's it going to be this time? Look at the 73 of Lucido from nowhere back into the sixth place spot side by side for fifth. They're side by side for the lead. Coming out of turn number two, Keegan Sabilo almost down to the apron, defending his position contact. Entering turn number three. Second first, same as the, as the first for Keegan Sabilo, or no! Instead, he shucks the 24 out of line. They're three wide for second, and it's going to be Keegan Sabilo at the line to win at Texas Motor Speedway in the Champion Power Equipment Truck Series. None of us picked Keegan Sabilo. None of us picked him. Last week, he would have been the pick all day long. I mean, he, he, he dominated at Martinsville until something went wrong for him. He got in the pack and just never was able to get back there. But then he gets the win he deserves here at Texas. Oh, a little bit of displeasure being paid to Keegan Sabilo from the 24. I don't think the 24 appreciates it too much. We might have to take a look back at that. Or was that a congratulatory bumper? Was that some anger? Mm. I think it was maybe a little bit more frustration because they were side by side through three and four. I don't know if Sabilo came off the bottom or if Nathan Meyer pinched him, but there was definitely contact in the middle of the corner, and Nathan Meyer was the one that got pushed out of the groove. I believe this is coming to the white flag out of turn number four, so we're going to get a good long look of this last lap to be able to see exactly what happened between Sabilo and, uh, and uh, Meyer. Yeah, I mean, I think Sabilo clearly had the advantage right here and, and on the back stretch. I think he was doing fine. Of course, still side by side. You see Meyer does get a good run down the back stretch. Sabilo goes all the way to the bottom. Try to break that side draft and a little bit of contact like you were saying. Right there. Right there. I, mean, I, mean, I, don't, I would not be mad about that. I think that was just, they were racing close. That looks more like a, a net go push up the racetrack. Like they're, they're just leaning on each other. And I think it was just unfortunate that, that Meyer got pushed out to the outside. I don't actually yeah. think Sabilo opened his wheel at all. I don't think Sabilo did that at all on purpose. It wasn't a malicious thing. It was just they were racing hard. Um, and I think Sabilo, you know, didn't win. He, he got the win he deserved last week here tonight. And uh, that's going to, I think that they're going to make him a lot more relevant in the points. Of course, he was in third. This could uh, definitely make the championship points race a lot more, I'd say, exciting. But what a, what a finish. Absolutely. We're going to, after that finish, we're going to take a little breather, send it to our final commercial break of the evening. Uh, whenever we get back on the other side, we're going to interview our top three finishers and try to figure out what happened uh, between a couple of them at the finish. Stay tuned.
back to the Champion Power Equipment Truck Series uh, from the Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, these are definitely not our uh, final results. <laughs> We're in a, <laughs> um, uh, I'm pretty sure Gary is not run in the Champion Power Equipment Truck Series. This is the one that looks a little bit uh, more legitimate. Our unofficial results here tonight. King and Sabilo ends up being the race winner. Andrew Hale in second. James Harris third. Mike the Meyer in fourth. John Lucido fifth. Tyler Meeks. William Mann Jr. George Young. Carter Casey. And John Thacker ran out your top ten. Uh, Russ Kilgore, of course, uh, 11th place, Ray Kennison in 12th, Brian High 13th, Dan Hillowig in 14th, Colby Jackson in 15th, uh, Timothy Babcock 16th, uh, Gar Snyder in 17th, and James South rounds out this 18-car uh, field. That's going to do it for our unofficial results. Now we're going to jump into our top three finishers we're gonna probably talk to james harris first our third place finisher if we can find him down in the chat james harris how's it going my man p3 congratulations on the good finish i i gotta imagine you're still feeling a little a little upset this being your home track still cannot get it done here but still a little bit better finish than last season yeah it's a lot better i think the league curse is over however because i've done four public texas races this week and they either got net coded or wrecked so i think the curse moved to public races uh so I think we, were, yeah, I think we were good on the long run tonight. And as usual, like a lot of these races, you have a bunch of cautions at the end that bunches up the field. And I think green flag run. If I can get one of those at Texas, I think we'll get the dub. But we, we had a fun good night tonight, though. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let a bunch of laps out there. Looked really, looked really strong compared to a lot of your uh, competitors. Are you really just wanting one of these things to run green for the last 30 or so laps uh, to really give yourself an opportunity, or do you do you feel like the the late cautions? put you in a good spot you know what, what would you rather happen at the end of these things to give yourself the best chance well if it was me from two years ago i'd say i would want a late race caution but now i would say i'm probably one of the top three guys in the league of saving tires on the long run and i've been working with uh, my setup shot guys to learn more so for me i like the long green flag runs because i'm learning how to run hard and still conserve tires at the same time um so uh for me i want long green flag runs i think we had the right strategy there taking the tires early and if they had gone green the, the, the majority of the race, then I think that would have been the winning strategy. But, you know, it is what it is. We still had a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, regardless. And that was great racing between you and the eight. Uh, uh, Carter Casey on that green flag run. I mean, phenomenal the entire time. So big congrats to or big thank you to putting on a good show during that green flag run for the lead. Um, and congrats on the third place finish. Are there any shout outs you can give here at the end of this one? Yeah, I want to say hi to my dad. I don't know if he's watching tonight, but he's definitely a lot better. He has been watching some TV and, and stuff like that. He's still on the ventilator, but I want to say hi, Dad, if you're watching, I try my best and go Rangers. Uh, thank my wife. I want to thank Kevin Kircher with Blackstone Management, Champion Power Equipment, Green Mountain Grills, and my world championship, Texas Rangers, for being on my truck tonight. Well, big congratulations to you, James Harris, for finishing third place tonight. Backing up the uh, uh, really good finishes you've had recently and the win recently uh, with a nice third place tonight. So big congratulations. Yeah, forward. Thank you. I'm going to take this momentum and go to Dega. Sounds good. Can't wait to see you there in a week's time. <laughs> yeah, that was our third place finisher, James Harris. Great job by him. Uh, you know, kind of kind of surviving the, the mayhem at the end, if you will. Uh, but next up, we're going to move to our second place finisher, Andrew Hale, who's standing side by side with Brian Britt. Andrew, definitely a great job for you tonight. I got to be honest, man. You, you just didn't show up uh, until we saw until the end of the race. I and mean, we were kind of like, hey, what's where's Andrew Hale at? He's reigning champion where, where's the four at and then, then of course you showed up uh what did it take to get up there in contention at the end uh i was sitting there running tents with what 10 to go there that last caution before we had breakfast uh and i was like my only chance here to jump some people is uh two tires so i took rights and left and when i come second out of pits which put me fourth or no third behind Thacker and then he spun the tires looked like he missed two shifts as slow as he was going but uh we held off there missed the wreck in uh one and two and restarted there and they were talking strategy on the discord there now my strategy was just win I'm not here for points I'm obviously too far back missing some races but I was looking for the win but if I could help anybody, it was going to be Keegan to win it. Well, you definitely, uh, you know, did that. I know Keegan was really uh, battling hard with Nathan Meyer, but definitely a good finish for you, a good second place uh, position because you finished, uh, you started in eighth place, uh, finished for second. 
course. Unfortunately, you know, you're not going to be in the championship really uh, hunt this this year. Um, does that disappoint you at all, or are you just coming out here to get some wins? Uh, it does, but it doesn't. The, I got kids in uh, baseball and softball right now, so I'm going to have to miss quite a few this season, maybe possibly next season if they go on to tournaments at the end of the year. All right. Well, definitely. I know family comes first, uh, Andrew. Uh, how do you feel? Are you going to be at Talladega next week? Possibly. If the game rains out, I possibly will be there. I'll try to get Jason to show up, see if we can go win it again. All right. Definitely be good to uh, have some teammates. I know we missed Jason out here. I don't think he was out here tonight as well. So hopefully things are going well with him. Uh, but who can we shout out, Andrew, after your second place finish? Uh, I'd like to shout out Champion Power Equipment for uh, – Helping us put this thing on, sponsoring us, and uh, you guys up in the broadcast, making this thing live. All right, Andrew. Thanks for your time, and uh, have a great night, man. All right. Appreciate it. That was Andrew Hill, driver of the Ford Machine. Next up, uh, Austin Estrom's going to be standing by with our winner, Keegan Sobilo. Keegan Sabilo, my man, bringing it home with the checkered flag. A little bit of controversy at the end there, at least it seemed like it after the checkered flag. But from our vantage point, looked like pretty inconsequential contact. Maybe just a little bit of uh, net code that pushed the 24 up the racetrack. But nonetheless, a little bit different than the last time we were here at Texas. Last time, we were talking to you for the second place finish, coming home 15 thousandths of a second behind its second. Now this time, in a side-by-side -side battle, almost to the line, bringing it home with the checkered flag this time. How does it feel this time around? You know, it feels great. I was struggling early in the race, so, um, you know, I, I was getting worried back running a ninth place because I didn't take tires at the beginning. Um, just battled through it and tried to get up here, and uh, those few cautions fell the way I needed to. But finally, um, not the photo finish on the other end this time, so uh, that's pretty good. Last time it hurt pretty bad, um, but, uh, you know, thankful to be able to come out here and get it done tonight. You know, good race in there with the rest of the field. Um, yeah, there was a good race in there with Nathan. I don't know what happened going into three. I just, all I know was, I think we got connected or something and it sent him up a little bit. It was not intentional on my means at all. Um, you know, I, I don't even really know what happened fully. Uh, but yeah, I felt like I just kind of held it there and we kind of got connected, like you guys said, maybe neck code or something. But uh, tons of respect to the guys tonight. It was uh, a lot of fun to race with them and uh, glad we got another Texas win here this year. So, Keegan, were you a little bit nervous there uh, after that? Not after the first caution, I suppose, but uh, during that big green flag run after the first caution, whenever you came down and, and took fuel uh, but didn't take tires, were you really, really worried that that thing was going to run green to the end and you were just going to have to settle for somewhere around fifth? Yeah, um, that's a good question. You know, it's hard to say because it could go either way. You know, it could be when you least expect it, some, something could happen that causes a caution or it could just go green when they're four wide every lap. You just never know. Um, so it could have played out either way. So just stayed calm, did the best with what we could with our strategy, uh, saved some tire, maybe a little bit too much to making up some of that time. And uh, like I said, the caution just fell right when we needed it um, and was able to battle. Um, but, you, you know, that's a great thing about racing in this league and champion power equipment truck series. Uh, you never know what's going to come. You know, it's always testing you is uh, what position you're in. Um, and that could have, you know, been, like you said, a fifth place finish or it could have been a win like this. Uh, you just never know what's going to end up happening. Well, King, congrats on uh, bringing home the W. Likely uh, putting yourself up at the top spot of the point standings as well or stretching out your, your points lead, I should say. Say, I'm sorry, you're actually still second in points behind Nathan Meyer. Meyer. Uh, but still keeping it close to Nathan, the, the, the battle between y'all has just been super spicy. Nathan came down to you to end tonight. Uh, how are you feeling in that championship battle with y'all being so, so close? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm coming up to a few rough racetracks. Um, and, you know, we got Talladega mixed in there, so you never know how that's going to end up going. Um, got, a, got a good point lead last week, but just didn't fall the right way. And... Uh, didn't work out, um, but we're just going to keep battling forward. Uh, I got a few kind of short racetracks that we can utilize at North Wilkesboro and things like that. So we'll just kind of take each week as it is, um, try and just score good point stays and see what we got here coming to the end. Uh, but we're going to give it our best shot. Well, Keegan, big congratulations on uh, bringing home the, the W tonight. Are there any shout outs you can give here for the end of us at this one? 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you to all the sponsors uh, on the truck. Um, Sabila Racing Esports, After Hours Restorations, Admin Box, um, Johnson I Racing Team, United States Racing League. Thank you to Champion Power Equipment and uh, James, everyone who puts this event on, uh, the drivers put on a good show. Uh, Grid Vision, everything you guys do. Um, it's great to have a great quality broadcast to come back and look at um, afterwards. And uh, thank you to Justin Levine tonight and uh, the rest of the guys that were able to hang out with tonight. Um, called the strategies perfectly uh, right when we needed it and what I had to do and help keep me calm and put me up here in a position to, to be able to do what we did. So, uh, yeah, and I appreciate everyone who tuned in tonight and hopefully we'll see them all next week for another great show. Well, Kagan, thank you for putting on a good show here tonight and we're definitely looking forward to uh, seeing what you can do next week at Talladega. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. That was a race winner, Kagan Sabilo. And that's going to probably do it here from Texas Motor Speedway here from us on the grid. Brian, what do you think of tonight's race? It was definitely interesting. I mean, we saw a little bit of everything. We saw, you know, even some green flag pit stops from some drivers. We saw some drama. I got to say a lot of drama here tonight. And uh, I'm curious uh, what is going to be the results of that drama? Will it spill over into Talladega? I think everybody's got that question on their minds. We're going to find out next week. That's for sure. We're definitely going to find out next week from Talladega. But for tonight, from the entire Grid Vision team, we'd like to thank you for watching and participating in our chat. For more information on getting your league broadcasted or starting your career in broadcasting, contact us at Facebook, X, or email us at info at Grid Vision Live. I mean, who who wouldn't want to announce side by side with me? Come on now. Congratulations to King and Savilo on winning tonight's race from the Texas Motor Speedway. This has been Austin Edstrom and Brian Britt and Austin Darbyshire. Be sure to tune in next week whenever we have more racing action coming at you on the grid.